rolling through turns three and four at Daytona at the back of the pack here for a qualifying race. Uh, the year is 1995. We're going to see if we can make some moves here to get to the front of the pack. we got a short qualifying race, 13 green, laps. Going to the green. Go get them. We'll have to try to get as far up in the field as we can to get a good starting spot. Put it into second here for the start. Green flag, green flag. Green flag is out, will mash the throttle, but very slow acceleration up into third gear. With the restrictor plate, restricted engine really not accelerating very quickly. So we'll keep it behind the 44 here. Draft will be king up into fourth gear, and we'll keep it there for the balance of the race, hopefully. Stick it onto the low side here, maybe be able to pass a couple of the back uh, cars at the back here quickly, but not having anybody directly in front to draft with will be interesting to see if we can get up to speed sufficiently. It takes almost two full laps to get the car up to the top speed. That's what restricting the engine will do and creates the awesome racing as a side effect. Every February I get the urge as I'm starting to watch racing, watch uh, NASCAR is really one of the first things on and I get the urge again to do some oval racing. Uh, NASCAR 2003 has been that sim now for over 15 years that uh, satiates that urge. Close behind the 22 here. Maybe we can duck low into turns three and four. And these were the cars of my youth, the 19, early 1990s to mid 1990s, when I remember really getting into NASCAR, into racing uh, for the first time, being an American, and just all of the paint schemes bring back so many memories. I feel like this era was so vibrant and distinct with all of the different cars. You know exactly which car it is the moment you see it. So now we're fully up to speed. Top out over 190 down the back straight away. Dip down just below 190 through the corners. We're not the quickest car, but I think with the draft, we can make some pretty good uh, moves to try to get up towards the front. He's got Dale Earnhardt on the very high side. This is the 1995 car set, but it's done up with the 1998 mod for uh, NASCAR 2003, a mod that came out pretty recently, actually. Folks still making content for this sim. Still a lot of fun to be had here. Admittedly, racing at Daytona, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's not the most challenging track. It's really more of a test of patience and whether or not you can keep the car in a good spot for the duration. Not a lot of modulation here. I'm going to dip off the throttle just a little bit, but most likely just flat out the whole way. But it'll be a quick race. Staying on the high side here, the 33 car. A lot tougher to try to pass on. Just a little bit of ground. Cars moving around a ton in front. Getting the clear, gonna jump down in front, down right to the yellow line through turn one and two. And onto the back straight away. There's definitely an art to it. A lot of skill needed with AI. Maybe not quite as much so as in real life, but still a lot of patience, a lot of planning. It's a little more like chess than auto racing. To pick who you want to draft with, which line you think will move. As like, cars are going to get strung out a little bit, they're racing pretty realistically for this period where it uh, wasn't quite yet that the cars and the race would be in a mass. 
massive pack that was to come in the following years. But in the early to mid 90s, the cars really got strung out a bit, a lot of single file racing, and then cars would jump out to do specific runs. I actually think it's kind of the sweet spot of oval super speedway racing, especially with restrictor plates. Today with the massive packs and the honestly embarrassing race that happened for the uh, Bush Clash here this past weekend, uh, definitely look back at some of these older races with maybe rose-tinted glasses, but definitely some nostalgia and uh, entertainment. Most of them. We're making a low run here on Bobby Labonte in the 18. It would have been the first year that he was in that car. Ball player. Oh, just dipping there a little too low, really easy to get squirrely and spin the car out. Of course, the buffeting from the other cars is a major factor in trying to keep the car in a straight line. up some good ground up into 17th position but still with this lead pack which is what's key I've got a couple cars behind me and a few that have fallen off the lead pack work our way into turn number three side and run it down low under the 26 uh, getting very close to running in cross the line to complete another lap just five laps to go spotter just non-stop talking to dip off the throttle just a little bit into turn one To make sure there's nobody there so we can get a run on the 43 driven by Bobby Hamilton in the 95 season. He's got Michael Waltrip in front of him. Bobby Labonte able to easily get under us. Slot up in front. Close down here in front of Kyle Petty behind. Sneak around them on the low side. 
post up. Jeff Bodine sneaking under him. Let's see if we can come by and Earnhardt close in a little bit. Give him a little bit of a bump coming into turn three. Having to breathe that you don't want to bump in the corner. It's going to slow us down a little bit. One car coming below us. Kyle Petty as well. So we'll come to the line. Checkered flag waving. Picking up six positions, so just losing one spot there on the final lap. Maybe the move to the high side on the back stretch there wasn't exactly what we needed, but. Overall, a good race moving up from the very back. I think there's 23 cars in total in this one. We'll take a quick look there at the finishing order. Um, bottom right-hand corner of the screen, Jeff Bodine from Rick Mast. John Andretti in the 37. I should have realized I was following him the whole time, obviously recently uh, passing away and, and helping us get to the front there. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, for this one, and then Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Craven in the 41, Kyle Petty, and then uh, myself, uh, Jay William there finishing in seventh place, I guess it looks like, uh, in the end. And we'll come here missing the pit lane, but we'll roll, roll past the start finish line again. Um, NASCAR 2003 is one of those Good sins job, that keeps giving, Go I think, off, buddy. Good job. Uh, you know, this short of a race, this, uh, this track, Honestly, Daytona is one of the worst tracks to race at in NASCAR 2003. It's just, um, you know, with the AI, the way it is and everything, it's not always the uh, most interesting of races, but uh, it does, you know, provide a good shakeup. I know mid-season, if you do a, a lot of races, if you end up going to Talladega and Daytona, it's fun to, uh, to do something a little bit different than the normal mile and a half circuit, but uh, always love doing some NASCAR racing. I know it's a little bit different for for folks than the uh, normal F1 or Grand Prix Legends stuff, uh, but thought it'd be fun knowing that it's Speed Weeks right now to do a to do a cool uh, you know fun race here. Uh, could be interesting maybe to do some more if folks like this um, could maybe do a 95 season or something. So let me know what you think of that. Uh, but hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back again soon for some more. <laughs>